I remember how my great uncle Jerry would sit on the porch and whittle all day long. Once he whittled me a toy boat out of a larger toy boat I had. It was almost as good as the first one, except now it had bumpy whittle marks all over it and no paint because he had whittled off the paint. Ugh. Jack Handy Deep Thoughts. This guy is amazing. So now that you got your entertainment for the night out of the way, I figured I would teach you guys a tutorial. So that was kind of a weird intro, but you know, sometimes it's necessary to get your attention. So what have we learned so far? We learned that an if statement can test a condition to see if it's true or false. If it's true, it'll do something. Simple enough. Then we learned the if else. And this pretty much tests, tests, tests uh, two conditions. If it's true, do this. If it's false, do this. Pretty much black and white. Now, to get into more complex, we did nested if else. And that was all right with like testing three conditions. But once we want to test like four and five, we would have to nest stuff and nest stuff and nest stuff. And, you know, we're not a bird. We can't nest all this stuff. So we need an easier way. I mean, we got a way to test one condition if. Two conditions if else. Three conditions nested if. Eh, that's all right. Four, five. No way we're nesting all that stuff. So what is a way where we can test several conditions with a simple syntax? Well, you are in luck because in this tutorial, you're about to learn how. It's called else if. Oh yeah, you hear me right. We already learned if, we already learned else, we here learned nested if else, but now we're going to learn else if? Is that confusing enough for you yet? Well, it won't be in just a second. So check this out. Let's go ahead and we're going to make a program that it's going to have to take more than two variables, not like what's your name, male, female, one, two. It's going to have to take several. So what we're going to be building is a way that they can enter the time. And depending on what time it is, it's going to enter either morning, afternoon, or if they enter something weird, they're just like, what the F time is it or something. So that's three options we're working with here. And trust me, by the end, you'll understand how this works. So enough of just random talking. Let's actually get the program so we can actually understand what I'm talking about. Let's go ahead and make a variable called time. And we're going to have them enter the time. So let's put in an NS log. And put like enter the FN time. Because, you know, we really want to get their attention here. Might as well put an explanation point. And now, since we were so mean, we might as well give them an opportunity to enter it using scan F. So of course they're going to enter an integer so put percent i and then uh point that to was it time that looks good So now whatever integer they enter is going to be stored in the variable time So now let's go ahead and make what we learned before and this is military time by the way it goes from they can either enter 0 to like 24 it's like uh that's what we'll do because that's a nice way you can use integers for time because if not, if they enter four, you bet, is this morning or afternoon? So we're using military time for this program. A little background. So let's go ahead and do what we learned so far. If uh, time is less than, let's say, 11, I don't know when morning officially ends. Uh, if you do, leave me a comment. NS log. Let's put like, good morning to ya. Like a pirate, of course, because why wouldn't we? And now, since we're going to be having like, We'll do like 16 for afternoon, which is actually like 4 o'clock in military time. And we'll do 24 at the end of the day. And anything after that, we'll just put else because they can't have more than 24 because there's not more than 24 hours in a day. So let's go ahead and in order to give them several other conditions to test, we need to put else if. So let's go ahead and put else if time is less than 16, which means if time is less than 4 o'clock... Uh, what are we going to log? We already took care of morning. If they entered a time that was less than 11 o'clock, it's morning. If they entered a time that was less than 16, which is 4 o'clock, it'd be like after noon. And now let's go ahead and make another else if right here. And we'll test for 24. And 24 and it'll say good night Hoss and if they enter a number that's greater than 24 let's just go ahead and put else right there and now you see it says statements 
so if they enter a number that was more than 24 then that isn't even a time at all so let's go ahead and put what the F did you even enter they probably entered like a letter or something so let me run this real quick and then I'll explain to you guys why it works as long as I didn't get any errors enter F in time wow that is kinda harsh isn't it it's not so much when uh, you're on the receiving end of that but let's go ahead and enter um, 9 in the morning good morning to you building around this baby again enter F in time uh, let's enter like 18 good night Haas build and run um, enter F in time and then it will enter like 99 and it says what the F did you even enter so let me explain why this works well first of all you're saying alright if I entered something like 18 then this would be true I mean excuse me if I entered a time like 7 o'clock well 7 is less than 11 but it's also less than 16 and it's also less than 24 so why does it know to say good morning to you well whenever you have an if else if as elf is else if and you can have as many of these else ifs it doesn't matter as long as you have these in the same block of code it's gonna exit the entire block as soon as it comes to one condition that is true so for example as soon as it meets one condition that's true then it's gonna exit so if it hits true on this one and it's less than 11 it's not even gonna check this one or this one or this one it's only looking for one true thing so for example you could write on this one else if the time is greater than 11 and less than 16 using that you know conditional operator but there really isn't a need for that since we already know if it if we enter 12 and it, this proves false then we already know that it's greater than 11 so for example if you enter something like 6 and you say alright well then all of these good morning good afternoon good night they should all pop up that's not the case because as soon as a condition proves true it executes that statement and then it skips all the rest of these because it already found its option so that's the basics of what I'm trying to teach you in this tutorial again that's else if and that's a better way to use a test not if not else but when you have many options that you want to give the user that's the best way to do it so uh, thank you for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you next tutorial. By the way, my trip to Florida was awesome.